Afternoon guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Suffer Alliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back with part three in recreating the Trapper Nelson pack frame. And if you remember the last segment of this, we had recreated the frame itself and we were waiting on the pack to arrive. And the pack board on the back side that covers the piece that covers the pack board. And I got those this weekend from Jason Hunt, the guy that I'm working with on this project, and the pack is absolutely perfect. It's exactly what I wanted, it's one solid bucket made from a wax canvas. The back pad wraps around and laces on, you can see where it laces here. And we'll take it apart in a minute because we're going to do some modifications to things here. But what I want to show you is, had this been exactly the way I wanted to, it to be when it was finally assembled, I have to put straps on this pack yet. And what I did temporarily was I just took the original pack frames for the Trapper Nelson that I had. I had three of them. I gave one of them to Jason. So we were kind of using that one as a model on his end and the one that I had here, we we're using one of those as a model on my end. And both of them had canvas web strap type frames on them, the heavy cotton web straps on the frame as strapping. But it was basically just riveted to the frame and then it had a series of buckles and snaps and things on it to attach it to the bottom of the frame. So what I did temporarily was I just took a piece of two inch webbing and put a lark's head knot in it right on the frame at the opening and put two loops in it so that I could just come in here and loop it over the top like this and then throw it over my shoulder on one side and what that would do is it would give me that second strap free here that already has a loop adjusted in it that I could just lift the pack frame up and loop it around the bottom of the frame. It's like a hassle because I'm making it harder than it is. But. So it sits pretty good like that and it's actually fairly comfortable like that. I've got a pretty good load of gear in here, probably 15, 18, 20 pounds, something like that, plus the pack weight. And that's a real comfortable, simple solution to the pack straps. But what my plan is, when I looked at the original drawing of this pack that where the patent was applied for in the 20s, it actually had leather straps on it. And they were just looped over the frame and then sewn down and then they had buckles at the, just a clip at the bottom that clipped into an eye at the bottom of the frame. Now, here's the thing with this frame that we want to talk about today. When we originally decided to recreate this frame, there were lots of reasons why I wanted to do that. One was for the tradition, the nostalgia of that old type pack. But the other one was that it's a very versatile system in that you have a frame that you can attach things to without the pack or you can put the pack on it. And all of the pieces are sub-assemblies, so they're easy to maintain. And with that mentality in mind, there are some improvements I want to do, even to the one that I own and the one that Jason has, that we've been using for models, because they're not as modular as I want them to be. In other words, they don't break down as far as I want them to. I would like to see this thing be every single component completely separate, so that anything that needs to be serviced or replaced, that can easily be done in the field if needs be, including the frame itself. So what, I, what I'm going to do here is, instead of attaching these straps directly to the frame when I put the leather ones on and then sewing them together, I'm just going to punch holes in them so that I can lace them up with a leather lace. I just put this in here around everything around that metal stay in the bottom just like the original was pretty much when I wrapped it. All right, so now I've got it so where I can take the straps completely off. If I put leather in here and just punch holes in it and lace it with leather lace through three or four holes, I'll affect the same thing. And if I just put loops on the bottom of it like this with leather strap with leather lacing like this, tapering those straps down, and then put just a loop on there, then it's easy to replace that as well if something were to happen, and it could be easily replaced with cordage in the field if the leather broke. Now the other thing that we found out with these packs is that they were not the same. The grommet holes were not in the same place, and the eyelets on the frame were not the same size. So when Jason brought this over here, we had to do some manipulation to get this on, and now to get it off, you actually have to take the eyelets out because they're bigger than the grommets. 
and I want to alleviate that. And what I was thinking is, instead of having this metal stay in here that goes through these grommets, why not make the grommets pass through and a hole pass through on the frame and just tie it in three places with leather lace or leather thong because then it's easy just to replace that with any type of cordage I want to replace it with. It's going to hold the pack just as effectively. I don't need necessarily to have the metal stay in there at all. And if I go ahead and punch this through and put grommets on this back side as well, and I have a pass-through hole, I can still keep this back pad on here and strap other things to this frame beside the pack, besides the pack, excuse me, without having to take this portion off and just use the raw frame. I'll still have the back pad. And that's important to me too. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this apart. We're going to put grommets here to match the ones on this side. We're going to drill a pass-through hole, and then we're going to lace this thing on with leather straps like this, just cut pieces of leather through each of these holes. And then we're going to make a set of leather straps for this that taper down and go down into leather cordage that can be wrapped around the bottom of the frame. And then I think I'm going to have what I want. Now I gave Jason the heavy oak frame that I made so he would have one that was really good because I can recreate that. And I've got the pine frame. The pine frame seems to be fine, but I'd rather have the oak just for durability's sake. So I'm going to go ahead and make another frame later out of complete oak, but for right now, while I'm prototyping everything, I don't mind using the pine. Stay with me, we'll start taking this dude apart. Okay, so he's got some real nice buckles on this thing. They're not real expensive buckles, but the ones that I saw in these packs, they were not, but they last for a long time. They're made out of metal. You're not going to hurt them too bad. And he's got them sewn on there really well with this webbing. So that's all good. That's exactly what I wanted. And I've got, you know, a big wool blanket in here. And I've got my bush pot in here. I've got my wash coat in here. I've got some extra rope in here. So I've got a little bit of weight in this pack because I just wanted to see what it was going to feel like. But you've got a giant bucket right there, which is exactly what I wanted, with a flap over and the tie downs. That's really all you need. If you wanted to, you could punch grommets in this and I may do that just so that you can't cinch this down like this if you wanted to before you put the flap over but the original just had one single tie that went across from one side to the other that kind of mushed this down into an envelope and tied it down it really didn't have anything attached to the pack itself so I'm not sure what I'm going to do there yet so if we take these metal stays out these were on the original what really held the pack to the frame but in this case, it's not because these eyelets are bigger than the grommets. So really, this thing's not coming off of here no matter what until I take these eyelets out. So we're going to have to do that first. Okay, so we've taken all that out, and now we can take this pack off the frame. And now we're left with basically the raw frame, which has two grommets here because this hole's at the top above where this padding is this airspace device and we've got it laced on here so what I'm thinking now is we've got two grommets here but there's no grommets on this back side at all because it's not meant to be a pass-through in this design but I want it to be a pass-through so now I'm going to go through here and I'm going to chase this through and put a hole on here with a drill bit just chase it straight through and drill this out and then I'm going to set a grommet in the canvas on the back side of this. I'm going to set four grommet holes and set grommets in there. And then we'll have what we're looking for up to the point of putting straps on. So let's get that done. All right, so now I've just got a backer board on here, and I'm going to chase those holes all the way through with a bigger drill bit so I can get leather lace through there. like that. Make sure that these are lined up to do the same thing. I slid this down a little bit to get it out of my way there. I'm going to slide it back up. Right there's my holes. And this time I'm going to drill right down into my canvas on this one. Just like that. So I know where that grommet needs to go on the other side.
Okay, so let's talk about setting grommets real quick. This is really part of our sportsman's workshop series, but it's okay. We'll just cover it here. It's not a big deal. Um, having the ability to set grommets and canvas, things like that, will give you a lot of versatility when you are making your own gear. And this is a piece of prototype gear. This was like the first edition. This is the beta version of this pack. So if it's not exactly the same in all the spots, everything like that, it's okay. You got smaller grommets here that he put in than we put in here. And these grommets are the same size, I believe, maybe even a little bigger than the grommets that are in here now. It's not that big of a deal. I'm not worried about matching everything perfect. I want to get the functionality of it right. Then I'll worry about the aesthetics. So you can buy these grommet kits pretty cheap online. This one came off of Amazon and it's got, I don't know, probably uh, 20 grommets in it maybe, something like that. And it's got the tools that you need and that's the important part because you can buy replacement grommets pretty cheap in packets by themselves. So let's get this thing opened up here. And we'll go from there. We can punch through this package in here. All right. What we've got is we've got a backer board, an anvil, a flaring tool or a setting tool, and we also have a punch. And the punch just basically puts a hole in your canvas, and then you have the grommets, which are two piece, and we'll discuss those in just a minute. So, what you would do is you'd come in here with this backer board, and you put it underneath where you want to punch your grommet. Now, this is made just of a piece of hardwood. You could use anything that you have around for that, but if you buy this kit, you're going to get one of these with the kit. So, square that up on your hole centered. Come in here with the punching device and center that punching device over your hole and make sure it's centered where you want the grommet pretty much and then tap it home and it will cut that fabric you might have to hit it pretty hard you might want to hold a pair of pliers on there if you're not real confident with your cutting abilities this has been waxed so it's a little tougher you got to keep this thing square while you're cutting so it may take a couple extra wax to get this right then we'll be able to pull that plug out of there once we get it here. There we go. And if you miss a spot, just go back and hit it again. It's not that big of a deal. Or trim it with your knife. This is a fairly cheap kit, so I wouldn't expect this tool to be great, like one that would come in a tent repair kit or something. Then you would pull that part out, and you would put your anvil in there. But before you put your anvil in, you're going to put your grommet, one side of your grommet, the non-flared side or the flaring side up. So you're going to come in here and you're going to drop that right over the top of your hole, just like this. All right? And then you've got the top of your grommet, which goes on top like this, and your flaring tool will mushroom that out. So you come in with your flaring tool and you set the grommet until it's good and flat, just like that, and you should be good to go. All right, then you can come in on the other side, do the same thing, depending on which side you want to be the pretty side, because one side's gonna have a flare over on it, one side's gonna be smooth. If that matters to you, then you can make those adjustments as you go. I'm not really that worried about it on this prototype. I don't really care which side is out or showing. I just happen to get lucky on that one, that's all. We'll cut our second hole here. There we go. A little easier that time. Move that out of the way. We'll come in here with our grommet. Set it in. Put our grommet cap on there. Just like this. Come in with our flaring tool. Get everything nice and squared up. Just drive it home. All right, so now we can just come back in and lace this thing back on here. And again, just like we did in the very first video, it's pretty much a very simple lace, just like you were lacing up your shoes or a corset or anything like that.
start it at the top and just go all the way down. Time before I tighten this thing down, I'm going to go ahead and feed these laces through the holes just like this. And get myself enough lace that I can tie it, and then I'll cut that off. enough for three of them here and this one doesn't have any grommet in it it was just a hole in the board itself remember okay so now we've got our lace through there and we know everything's right here we can go ahead and tighten this thing up for our final tie up here to get this thing tight and what I'm going to do is come back around the bottom side of this just like I did the last time and tie it over the top of the stay here once I get it good and tight just like that and just tie it off in a bow knot right there a little extra cord's not going to hurt anything I go ahead and tie my ends off this is cotton cordage so it gives me again another emergency resource if I didn't have anything to char or something like that I could always use this cotton material for that tighten this up and now we're ready to put our pack back on here and all we should have to do is lay it over the top of this now and feed these leather laces right through our grommets and we can just tie the pack on and that's going to make it a lot more modular to be able to take it down into smaller components for either use or repair or replacement and that's what's important to me is the ability to do all of those things and it's going to hold it just as easily and just as well plus it gives me a little extra place out here that I can tie things off to the pack if I want to and things like that and I can just tie that in simple square knots and they're not going to come undone leather lace like this good leather lace is really good and strong it's not going to come undone on you And it's going to wear well over time. Okay, so I've just put that material back through there in a lark set, just like I had it before. And I've got them crossed over. I'll go ahead and put this pack back on now, and we'll see what it looks like now that we've got it attached to the frame differently. And you can see what that looks like. Again, it's not going anywhere. It's very comfortable. It's very serviceable now because I can take the pack off and I can leave that back padding on there to strap other things to that pack if I need to. I've got holes drilled through the frame with grommets now so I could actually put loops and toggles through there if I wanted to to lash something to the pack frame like a tarp bag of some kind, like a Roycroft frame, or I can use the pack itself. And this pack's big enough to hold one of those garbage cans or a five gallon bucket very, very easily if I wanted to use this out on the trap line as well. So now the only thing I want to do to this pack is I'd like to put leather straps on it. So we'll do that in the next video. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business. And I want to thank Jason Hunt, especially on this video, for making this fantastic pack and board assembly that goes around my pack frame. He did a fantastic job on it. Again, this is the first prototype. We're working on setting this up as a project, a self-build project for the Woodcraft 2 class coming up in September. I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.